Hey, hey guys, Bradley here. Welcome, welcome. Just give me a big Y in the chat box if you can hear me. Excellent. All right. Uh, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Nice to see you. Hi, Steve. Let me know where you're dialing in from. Hey, Nicholas. Cool. Hey, Brad. <laughs> no, it's night time for me. I just got a bad hair. Do I need to get a haircut? <laughs> hey, Gary. Yeah, Brad's saying, did we both just wake up? <laughs> Well, this is the joy of being internet marketers, you see. Not, no, you don't normally have to be on screen, but... Uh, no, I just drove back from Portland, so... Yeah. <laughs> Windswept. That's the look. <laughs> kind of is, yeah. It's a windy, windy, rainy trip from the car. Yeah. Hey, Lionel. Hey, Brian. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Ron. Good to see you. Let's just give a minute or so for some other guys to jump on. We're going to cover some great stuff today. Dan's a, a bit of a legend. I've been following him since back in the day, as I said in my emails when I announced the uh, the, the workshop. Um, hey, Barbara from Ottawa. Hey, Frank. Hashil, nice to see you. Good, good. Yeah, so um, we're in for a treat today, and I think uh, with everything that's going on with the um, Facebook algorithm all over the place and click prices going through the roof, then this is a great bit of diversification for everyone. To help put another string to the bow so we're not so dependent on facebook traffic because uh you know all your eggs in one basket is just uh, it's, it's never going to end well so yeah we are um, going to come back in a, a a few weeks and actually talk about how to hack that facebook audience stuff too a little bit right yeah that'd be cool hey paul from melbourne australia wow so you're up early it must be what like seven in the morning for you or something over there Good, good. Yeah. So I Ralph, usually meet with my yeah. Australian clients later in the day. So yeah. it's pretty early for these guys. Yeah, he's saying it's 7 a.m. That's commitment, huh? <laughs> cool. All right. Well, Sylvia's from Richmond in British Columbia. Awesome. So we're pretty much around the globe. Brisbane as well. Ron's from Brisbane, right? We've got a good Australian contingent today then. <laughs> oh wow. Gary's in New Zealand, so uh, yeah, you're even even earlier for Gary then. Seven, yeah, half, yeah, half the day's gone for. <laughs> Frank's from Hungary, right? Wow, okay, cool. So he's up later than you, pal. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Thank you. Frank. All right, well, let, let, I'm going to uh, hand over to Dan. Let me introduce you quickly because, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I've been following Dan since uh, 2009, I think. Um, when I had my garage door drop shipping business and uh, he was involved with a, a kind of a membership site called Stompernet at the time, him and his business partner, Leslie, and they were kind of like the, the, uh, the go-to guys for SEO and PPP, PPC stuff. And uh, it totally transformed my business. I um, was really struggling trying to figure out the SEO thing and I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. And then when I joined Stompernet, it was just like, oh, this is amazing. You know, it's like structured, it's so easy to understand. So ever since then, Dan's just been at the forefront of everything. Every Google update, algorithm update, um, you know, when they changed the uh, quality score stuff on PPC and all that, he's just been ahead of the field. So you're learning from the absolute best. Um, so I wanted to get him on here today just to give back to the community. It's just pure teaching today. And um, yeah, so write notes furiously. Turn off all distractions and uh, yeah, sit back and uh, absorb the knowledge because it's going to be able to uh, transform your business basically because Google Shopping is where it's at for Shopify. So without further ado, let me get Dan on so you can see his uh, slides and uh, away okay. we go. So I am now the presenter and somewhere in here I'm going to be able to share my slides. Is that right? Presenting, start sharing. There we go. Share window or screen. See, I'm not as stupid as I look. That's the important thing. Um, and then, okay, so now you, first you're going to see me seeing Bradley and you, and then I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint. I hope that works. And somebody's got to shout, like, Bradley, tell me. 
if if this actually works if you get my PowerPoint here. Have you seen it? Or have I failed because I've got my camera on? Okay, somebody sees it, so that's good news. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this to presentation mode and I'm just gonna start talking. So somebody's gotta interrupt me if you can't see or hear. And uh, that's why you need a co-host for these things. Okay, so we're just gonna play this one from the start. Okay, so um, I was just gonna call this winning with Google Shopping, but Bradley suggested maybe how to drive dirt cheap traffic to your store using Google Shopping campaigns, which works more or less as well. And so uh, first of all, who I am, you know, Bradley's told you, what his 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 take on that and i think that's more than enough but i've been uh, i've been doing this stuff basically since it was possible to do it um seo um really started to be called seo in 1996 and i was already doing it um although before 1996 it was really more of a parlor trick than a business enterprise i've been doing ppc since it became possible to do ppc with go to.com in 1998 I've uh, written lots of books and done lots of speaking and won lots of awards and which that probably doesn't help you very much, but there really, there aren't a lot of uh, people who have been in this industry um, for a long time that didn't, uh, didn't learn some of their craft in SEO and PPC from me. So my main focus these days is small and startup retailers in terms of what we're doing with PPC campaigns and particularly uh, for us with with the clients that we pursue and I'm not trying to sign you up to be a client today or anything. This is really just to, to show you how this stuff works and uh, offer you uh, the, the detailed training on how to set it up yourself if you want to. Um, but our focus has been um, most of our focus as an agency as a service provider has been with Shopify stores and that's one of the reasons why is just because it's so damned easy to get this stuff set up Shopify has already done a lot of the hard stuff that you would otherwise have to do or there's just a, an app. Uh, you know, plug in that you can stick in and, and have it working. So what we're going to be talking about today is running Google Shopping ads. And that's something that a lot of people haven't done uh, in the Shopify world. And it's it's a it's a missed opportunity, particularly if you've you know, learned how to sell stuff with Facebook. That's great because that's uh, well, that's a really important thing, like like Bradley said, to be able to diversify the channels and, and diversify. Um, your sources of traffic. But, you know, I've sold millions of dollars worth of products from my clients just in the last month um, through Google Shopping campaigns. And there really is a huge opportunity here. And you might hear AdWords, you might think expensive. And, and yes, there's lots of competition for the search ads. And there's lots of competition in the shopping ads. But you actually, if you have a small store, you actually have a tremendous advantage in a couple of ways over the big brands who are who are in there competing with you because they simply can't do what I'm going to show you how to do. So I'm going to show you how we do this with shopping campaigns, why it's it's kind of a little bit weird and different. Uh, but if you want to sell more stuff, if you want to get better profits out of the traffic that you're paying for, and you want if you actually want to do something in a way that will actually help you drive your Facebook campaigns higher, and that's one of the advantages of doing this with Shopify is there are ways to do that with Shopify that simply don't apply to other retailers without a whole lot of work. Stick around, and that's what you're going to get today. So uh, we all know the problem, right? We're trying to get traffic, and you're not selling anything without any traffic, right? Um, free organic traffic, SEO, is these days, it's mostly brand search that you want to drive, which means that you want to be doing those Facebook campaigns to, to drive organic search. And you probably can't see the keywords that are coming into your site from Google, but if you are getting significant organic, uh, organic traffic from Google, there's a very, very good chance that those are brand queries, people searching for you by name or searching for something that they already found on your site through Facebook. And the rest of that is earned by reputation. And that's something that just requires you to, to build your business up and, and build up your customers and, and build an audience for because you really can't fake the link thing anymore like you used to be able to do. So either way though, to get started, if you're, you know, if you're running less than a million dollars a year through your store, you're probably still getting started. Um, you're going to have to pay for traffic, uh, if nothing else, so that you have the ability to test things for conversion and stuff like that. And that's great, right? As long as you break even or better on paid traffic, you win. If all you do is break even and acquire a customer and you can't figure out how to make that, that profitable in the long run by you know, sending out emails or whatever, uh, that's on you. But these days, especially with you know all the kind of stuff that you can plug into Shopify, like Wheelio and whatever else that helps you you know, get, get, you know, capture leads and follow up and abandoned cart emails, all the stuff that, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have these things and you guys have all that stuff available to you now. So it really isn't that hard as long as you know how to control what kind of traffic you're getting and how much you pay. But in the end, to build a business, you have to acquire customers. That's how it's done, right? Of course, if you pay too much for the traffic, you can't win. And one of the things that's going to happen with, with Google, if you don't know what you're doing, is you will overpay for the traffic or you simply won't get very much. 
But if the traffic doesn't convert, it doesn't really matter how cheap the clicks are, right? If, if you pay a penny a click or a tenth of a penny a click and it doesn't convert, it's still a penny or a tenth of a penny wasted if you do it at scale, right? So you can buy a million hits for $10 these days, and it used to cost $20 back when I was a kid. So you can actually buy junk traffic for cheaper nowadays than you could, but none of that is going to convert. And you're going to lose the 10 bucks or however much you spend on. You could buy a billion hits, and it wouldn't cost you that much, but you'd lose all of it. Um, high quality traffic means high intent traffic. That is trying to get traffic into your website of people that actually want to buy or are interested in uh, what you're selling, what you're offering. We want to find people who are ready to buy now, right? That's why, you know, when, when we're on Facebook, we run that, that pixel and we do, um, you know, optimize for, uh, for conversion, because once you've managed to, you know, bite the bullet and spend, spend enough money to buy the hard conversions, Facebook can actually find you, um, cheaper conversions. There's a limit to how much that can scale. And, you know, people like Bradley can show you all the tricks about how to do that, or at least some of them. I may have one or two he doesn't know about yet, but we'll find out when uh, he and I talk about that. Um, but we're trying to get people who are ready to buy now. And really, search is the gold standard. I mean, if you're if you're running display ads or YouTube ads or Facebook ads, they weren't searching for what you're selling at the time. They weren't looking for something. They were doing something. With a search engine, when they go to Google and type in a search query and they're, and they're, and they're looking for what you sell, they're looking to be, be sold, right? And so search is really kind of the gold standard of high intent traffic. Um, and of course, if you use PPC, you'll discover that all the high volume, high intent keywords are very, very expensive because everybody else knows what search marketing is good for. And so that's something that um, you have to be really, really effective at converting. You have to really have a, a focus on lifetime value of a customer to run keyword based ads uh, search ads on Google and and remain profitable with that because there's always going to be somebody who's willing to pay more to acquire a customer than you are. And there's always going to be somebody who's willing to bid more for a keyword because it's high volume and they're in the marketing department of some corporation and their their job objective is to get a certain amount of traffic or a certain amount of sales. And somebody else is worrying about the advertising budget. It really does run that insanely in some corporations. In fact, most. But those high intent keywords on search ads, especially the, the higher the volume gets, the more expensive they get. The lower the search volume gets, there are lots of low volume uh, search queries, and we'll get some examples here in a minute, that you can't target with search ads because the volume is too low for you to even get a bid in on them. But with shopping ads, we can go and target those low volume, long tail, high intent keywords, and we can do that in a way that big brand competitors simply can't keep up with. And that's how we siphon off cheap sales out of Google AdWords. Now, if you use SEO, of course, you'll also have found it the same thing, right? There are no secret keywords. So if anybody's got some magic tool that will find high volume keywords with no competition and it's totally worth, the traffic is totally worth something, that's, <laughs> that doesn't exist. There are, there are millions of people out there banging on keyboards trying to find the magic mix of, of keywords and, and content and everything else to get that SEO traffic. Um, there is no easy, <laughs> high volume traffic that you can go get an SEO. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss SEO because we, we think that's important and it's part of my, my life and my business. But in the end, you're going to have to pay for traffic. And the math is easy, right? If you sell a $50 product, and you've got a 20% margin. That means that every time you sell that product, you've got $10 left. So as long as you spent less than $10 to sell it, you won. Again, that's break even. And you know some folks can afford to do break even and sustain growing a business that way and other folks need to actually make more profit now you can actually do either one it's just you're going to have to trade off higher sales for higher profit margins um, if you want to do that but you absolutely can using this approach i'm going to show you so you know if you've got a five percent conversion rate and you make ten dollars on the product then visitors to that product page are worth 50 cents per click so um, there are really only three ways to win this game then you can get higher conversion rate. So if you got that 5% to 6%, right, you'd be able to afford to either pay more per click or you'd make more uh, profit per click if you kept the cost per click the same. If you can increase that margin, if you can get that margin up to 30% or 40% or 50% by simply not competing on price anymore, um, then uh, then again, um, uh, you by, by getting higher margins, you can, again, you can either afford to bid more or you can keep paying the same amount per click and get, um, and get, uh, get just better profits, right, from the sales. And of course, you can also do things that allow you to lower the cost per click. And what I'm going to show you how to do here today will allow you to do all of those. So 
one of these things, margins is really a problem that I can't help you with. I can help you get higher conversion rate by getting higher intent keyword traffic to your website. I can help you get lower cost per click by doing some of the other efficiencies and stuff that we'll teach you um, how, to, how to use here. But I can't really help you with the margins. Those are your problem. Um, if your margins are worse than 20% markup, you really are in a, in, a, in a world of hurt in terms of doing paid traffic anywhere. But I would honestly have to say, if you're selling something at, at the full published retail price and you're not getting 20%, you're in the wrong business. Um, if you are selling something that everybody else sells and you're competing on price, you're not doing it right because you're never going to be the cheapest. You're never going to be the most desperate person in the world. There's always going to be somebody who's poorer and hungrier than you are and willing to give away more of the sale to get a little bit more money in their pocket. Okay. So raise your prices and just accept that some people are going to price shop you and go somewhere else, uh, sell unique products or however it is. But if you're competing on price um, and, and your margins are, are really, really low, I mean, you can be competing on price with a 300% markup. Great. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Um, you could probably afford to drop your price or some. But if you can't get the margins of, uh, to 20% or better, you should probably just stop watching this, this part now because this is going to require you to be able to spend some of that sale and, and about 20% of, of the sale um, as, as an advertising cost or getting $5 in sales for every dollar you spend in advertising is kind of the minimum uh, to me of, 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 of what you should be uh, willing to live with. And the, and the people that we know that are just making money on this stuff hand over fist uh, are people who have enough, enough markup or they have enough concept of lifetime value because they, they sell stuff that people buy over and over again. And so they want to get a customer because that customer will continue to buy. Uh, the people that can run it three to one can absolutely just rob the pockets of every big brand out there right now because of the way that, that Google's got shopping ads set up. So the way that we hack Google shopping ads is that we go after keywords that have higher intent in them. And I'll show you with you know real world examples, exactly what that means, exactly what that looks like. And then this strategy I'm going to show you, I mean, I, I, I'll go ahead and I call it super secret today, but I've been talking about this for more than five years and trying to get um, the agencies that run uh, shopping ads for, for retailers to, to do it. And very few of them are willing to do it because they think it's too much work. It's not, but you know, they're not very good listeners. Um, and there are a few companies out there now that offer this and they've got some brand name they put on and claim they've invented it, even though they probably learned it from me. But um, the by getting higher intent keywords in, in, and we're only bidding um, enough to have our ads show up when, when we have very, very high intent in the search query, that allows us to get a higher conversion rate. And then by targeting our best products, the ones that perform the best on your store, otherwise your best sellers first, you can even get higher conversion rates still. And of course, higher margins is something you can also control here because you can you can simply not uh, advertise products that you don't have good margins on and only advertise on the products that you do, do have sufficient margins on to make the math work. So you don't have to advertise if you don't make money. This is all under your control what products you're going to put into the Google Shopping ads. So shopping ads work differently than search ads. This is very, very important. In fact, this is one of the reasons why people think shopping ads are hard, but it's actually what makes it possible for you to beat big brands pants off in shopping ads. Because the way this works is that, that with search ads, you'll put in a, a, a bid for you know men's tennis racket as a, as a search term. And then you've got an ad that says buy men's tennis rackets at my store, yeah, 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 whatever, click here. Um, with, with shopping ads, you have your, your whole catalog of tennis rackets available and you can put individual bids on each one, but you don't control in the normal way that, that this default setup works with shopping ads with Google, you don't control what keywords those are gonna show up for. So Google can, in fact, show your product to anyone for any search query, even if it's completely unrelated to yours, to your product, if you're bidding high enough. Now there's practical limits because there's a, a maximum bid that's allowed and, and uh, and Google is trying to you know, find things that actually get a click-through rate because if they don't get clicks, they're not getting paid. So there are lots of things in the way that the system works that prevent Google from just showing you for random things. But when they've got some weird one-off query or even a high volume query that they don't really have a whole lot of advertisers with relevant answers, they'll just go show the closest thing they can, whoever the highest bid is. And so you can't really scale this thing up simply by raising your bids. And that's one of the big mistakes that people make is they're, you know, I'm gosh, I, you know, I've got a limited budget and my bids are here and I've got, I'm making five times and I'm doing great. And then they raise their bids because they want to go get more traffic because their impression share was only 10% or 12% or whatever. And they think, well, gosh, I can get more. Well, they get more, but their ROI doesn't go up because, uh, because 
Google broadens the search queries so much that it, 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 it starts to suck out your ROI. So if you bid high enough on a tennis racket, though, they'll certainly show it to people who search for tennis. Um, and tennis is not somebody who's searching for a tennis racket, right? You don't know what that is. We don't know if they even mean tennis, tennis, or if there's some new, you know, web startup that people are searching for called tennis, right? Ten dot is or whatever. I don't know, right? But if, if you bid high enough on, on that, they'll show it to, to people who search for things that just aren't relevant, right? And so this is not a good thing, but it's actually an advantage for smaller stores because big stores have to deal with it. Big brands have to live with this problem. Their catalogs are simply too big for them to use this trick I'm about to show you. So what we're going to do here today, Walmart can't do because they can't have enough Google accounts and campaigns and keyword lists to do this. Home Depot, whoever, whoever you're, you know, if you think about the big brands that you're competing against, they can't play this game. They're the ones that are going to be losing money on the very generic terms like tennis or even tennis racket, by the way, which might be too generic for you to make money on if you sell tennis rackets. But for us, it's easy. So with a smaller catalog, and I'm talking about, you know, thousands. So once you get over into the, into the 25, 30,000 plus product range, you start to, you start to have not just, you don't lose the ability to do this, but it starts to, your, your ability to do this becomes limited. Um, and as the catalog gets bigger than that, you really have to manage your stuff in other ways. And it's just a lot harder and there's a lot more software involved. But for a smaller catalog, for most of the folks that are that are running Shopify stores, you can effectively steal the highest intent searches in your market that people are using to, to search for the products that you sell from those, those big brands and not even give them a chance. So let's just, to make this more concrete, let's consider these search queries. Someone who searches for tennis, do you want to show them your Wilson Smasher A10 men's tennis racket? I don't know. Probably not. Somebody searches for tennis racket. Maybe men's tennis racket. More likely buy men's tennis racket. Way more likely because they just said they want to buy something. If they search for the Wilson Smasher men's tennis racket, and that's the one that you sell. Well, hell yeah, I want to bid on that, right? They're looking for one. And if it's for something like tennis rackets with free shipping, you probably want to be in there too, assuming that your store offers free shipping. So. The difference here is the level of intent, right? Any of these things might end up with somebody who searched for that eventually buying a tennis racket. But the, one I'm ex the ones I'm expecting to buy a tennis racket today are buy men's tennis racket, Wilson Smasher men's tennis racket, and tennis racket's free shipping, and maybe the people that search for men's tennis racket, although that might be somebody who's looking for reviews or a recommendation, and they haven't quite decided what to buy yet. And if they haven't quite decided what to buy yet, you really don't want to be sending them to a product page. So higher intent queries you may have noticed, contain more words, right? So things like buy, Wilson, Smasher, free shipping, that, 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 men's is even, a, you know, something that indicates a higher intent to buy. These are magic words. These are words that are full of intent. And by uh, understanding what those words are in your market, and by building lists of those words, you can make sure that you only bid high on any of your products when those words are present in the search query. So when, the, yeah, sorry, Bradley, go ahead. Like tennis rackets, right? In, in indeed, yeah. In fact, we run shopping ads to sell um, like uh, laser systems that are in the in the tens of thousands of dollars. We've we've run shopping campaigns to sell um, uh, medical um, like biological purification vats and stuff like that. Or even even stuff that 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 every system that they sell is actually a custom system. Every time they've built one and designed one and put a quote on it, they add that to a shopping cart, and we can run shopping ads for that. So you can use this for lead generation for um, you know for B two B. If you're actually if there's a physical product that gets sold and shipped, even if it's custom built every time, there are, there are ways to, ha to to hack in and use Google Shopping ads for that. So yeah, cool, perfect. And so and and the kind of stuff that we sell is anything from you know ten dollar. Uh, tumblers, you know, that we have a lot of people that, that do that kind of stuff all, all the way up to, um, you know, stuff, stuff that's in, in the hundreds and thousands of dollars um, on retail transactions. So yeah, we sell designer clothes with this stuff against, against, you know, the, the big brand companies that try and sell the same stuff and you can run circles around. And that's because you have the ability to selectively target only when those brand names or model numbers or those magic words are on, uh, you know, are, are in the query. And by the way, for the, you know, for the, if there are any of the, what I just call the t-shirt guys, kind of the, the custom printed product stuff, um, if you can just 
uh, grab enough of the words that are that are printed on a shirt. So if there's a slogan like, you know, I drink too much and I do stupid stuff, and that's like some meme you've gotten people to buy shirts for, um, you know, you can just say drink too much stupid as a keyword and, and make sure that they included the word shirt in the query. And you can actually have your ad only show up when somebody has, you know, those words from your shirt and shirt in a search query. That's not necessarily going to happen all the time, but every time it happens, wouldn't you like to be there? Right. Um, and your own Facebook campaigns, if you're doing custom printed products, will actually drive search that um, that you're not going to be uh, cashing in on unless you're unless you're running ads at the top of the page. So the secret here, of course, the big secret is that we want to bid more when there's higher shopping intent. That's kind of a duh. Right. But it gets us better conversion rates. It get us actually gets us a better click through rate on our on our ads, which can actually decrease our cost per click. And it gets us a better ROI overall at the at the end at the end of the thing. And the more ROI you can you can drive at a given bid level, the the more you can drive more sales if you're willing to trade off some of that ROI. But it's a simple question here: Would you bid more for buy men's tennis racket online with free shipping than you would bid for tennis racket? The answer, of course, is yes. That's just common sense, right? But Google Shopping doesn't let you control bids by keyword. So how do we do it? Well, <laughs> Google doesn't let let Walmart and Amazon do it, but actually you can because your catalog is small enough. So here's how we do it. Now, I'm going to walk you through an explanation that takes about eight minutes. And for somebody who's run shopping campaigns, so if anybody out here has actually run shopping campaigns, or if you, even if you're just reasonably familiar with running AdWords campaigns, what I'm about to show you will probably make perfect sense. Okay. If it doesn't, that's okay. Fight through it because I'm going to be showing you as we go through it what you're going to be able to get out of it once you learn. But I will actually give you the whole training for free at the, at the end of the show here so that you can you can sign up and get the complete detailed step by step how to do it. So the short version here of what I'm about to tell you is that you can test shopping campaigns with a very simple low bid, low budget strategy. So you don't have to put a whole bunch of money at risk. In fact, Lots of people have been able to, to bootstrap their way into effective campaigns with like a hundred dollar AdWords credit that they got from an agency or from you know a postcard from Google or whatever. So, literally, um, you can you can bootstrap this and, and, and prove that it works and get it up and running um, for next to nothing. If next to nothing is what you've got, um, I don't recommend doing the slowest way. But um, but if 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 you if you really are are dealing with with very minimal budget, or you know if you got you know a new store you're trying to launch, you don't really have budget for it. Get a you know open a new AdWords account, get a credit, and and run this thing on a credit. Once you identify the winning mix of bids and keywords, you can scale it up. I don't know how big you're going to be able to scale it. It can take some time to scale it, um, and part of scaling it is the decision that you're going to have to make at some point as your sales grow. Is do I want to reduce these sales a little bit and get a little bit better ROI and better margins? Or do I want to actually go ahead and, and bid all the way to break even and acquire more customers and not actually turn a profit on this stuff at all? The cool thing about being on Shopify is that with Shopify, and, and I don't believe it, it's unique to Shopify. I mean, you can set up dynamic product ads on Facebook um, using a Magento card or whatever, if you're willing to hack through all the tech junk. One of the reasons why we only work with Shopify people uh, as, as AdWords clients is because it's easy for us to set it up <laughs> with, with our AdWords clients to make sure that they've got dynamic product ads running on Facebook because half the people coming in from AdWords approximately, if you're in the US, are already going to be logged into Facebook. And so that Facebook pixel is going to fire when they hit that product page. So if you've got dynamic product ads running, you might find out that you actually get more sales in the long run out of Facebook from the traffic that you sent from Google than what you got from Google. So if you can break even on Google and then get those follow-up sales through Facebook at a high at a high ROI, because the the high engagement, the higher relevance is going to help protect you against higher higher click costs. Google AdWords feeding Facebook um, for everybody that has the means and is 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 really trying to go to a long-term growth strategy and not just try and you know, make a hundred bucks a week this week, um, but wants to make a lot more money per month or per year down the road, I recommend you go as close to break even as you can uh, because you're going to make uh, more with those Facebook audiences if you can afford to do that than you actually make on the Google ads anyway. Because once you've got those people in that audience on Facebook, you can keep talking to them for a long time. Uh, so I'm going to walk you now into the way that Google AdWords campaigns are set up in shopping. 
So again, if you've never been uh, running a shopping campaign or you've never run AdWords campaigns, this might be a little bit strange, but a lot of the concepts here are very similar to running Facebook ads. So within shopping campaigns, Google has a concept called priority. What this means is that certain ads actually, um, certain campaigns will get first choice of whether they're going to show an ad for a keyword. There's high, medium, and low priority. So when someone searches for tennis racket, Google is going to go to your high priority campaigns and say, do any of your campaigns with the high priority setting have a product that we can match and are we allowed to serve an ad? So what people typically do when they set up a shopping campaign, and I've seen actually agencies that will set it up exactly like this, where there's one campaign called shopping that's set to high priority. There's one ad group called ad group number one, which means they literally didn't even change the default name. And then there's one product group in there, which is all of the products in the catalog have probably the same bid price on them. Um, this is the bare minimum to actually be running a shopping campaign. But if you raise your bids, um, the faster you raise your bids, the more you raise your bids, the more money you're going to lose. And the only way it's going to make any money, and you can make money even doing this with low enough bids because, um, because you're not going to show up except for highly relevant high intent queries anyway, because you're hardly going to show up for anything at all. But you know, setting this thing up where you've got one campaign and one ad group. So if you've paid somebody to set it up and this is what you see, you've got one ad group with one product uh, group that's all products and one bid on everything. They didn't do a very good job. Um, in fact, we would just call this completely unmanaged. Now, to move this up a level and what we would recommend and training, our training shows you how to do is you want to actually have... Um, You'll start with a high priority campaign. You'll have uh, you'll have a couple of different ad groups in it for different categories. So if you sell, uh, I don't know, uh, tennis rackets and tennis shoes, you might have um, have an ad group for rackets and, a, and a, an ad group for shoes. Then you might have a subgroup uh, for men's and women's or or, or however that your your market and however your products break up. That allows you to actually control things a little bit better. So the examples here, you know, if we had ad groups for men's shoes, there might be product groups within men's shoes that are boots, loafers, dress shoes, or sometimes um, you know, individual products that are, uh, you know, sort of one off. So, so if you can, if you can get yourself set up to this stage, or if you've got somebody that's that's already done this for you and they and they've set it up to this stage, it's set up, it's configured, it's manageable, um, and and literally simply doing this, like just doing a little bit more work in the setup and breaking things out. We have regularly doubled the sales, like practically overnight, by simply breaking out the bids and breaking stuff out. And this has been accomplished without even increasing the, 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 the amount of money that's going into the ad. So without losing ROI. So if you've paid somebody to set stuff up for you and they've gotten you this far, they probably did a pretty good job. And this is a necessary step. So um, if you've already done this or you already know how to do this, great. You're already ready to jump and, and take things to the next level. If not, um, the free training I'm going to give you will show you how to get that, this set up and get yourself to this stage. So just remember the math here. Your conversion rate times your margin should be what you bid. You should be bidding to break even uh, unless you've got a reason why you, you simply can't bid to break even. So if you got a $10 markup on a product and that converts at 5%, are you expected to convert at 5%? Because that's the conversion rate that you get from people at the product page. When you look at your analytics, then you'd want to bid 50 cents. 50 cents is just 5% of $10, okay? But this is a search engine after all, and there are those magic words. So, you know, if we're selling um, selling watches, for example, uh, or, or, you know, men's, uh, men's uh, watches, uh, you know, cufflinks, stuff like that, engraved, monograms, stuff like that, there might be these magic words in your market. I don't know what you sell, but in every market, there are magic words. And by the way, just things like buy, you know, ship, free shipping, order online, stuff like that. Those are magic words for everybody too. What we're going to do is build lists of those things. And then we're going to go to a two uh, campaign structure. So we're going to still have a high priority campaign, but we're going to greatly reduce the bids on the high campaign. So we're going to take the bids way, way down to maybe a fifth of what they would have been um, if, we were, uh, if we were buying high intent keywords. And then we're going to have a medium priority campaign that only targets the high intent keywords. The way that we do that, which is really weird, and you're, you're, you're just, your head is going to break until you actually see this working in real life, is on the high priority campaign, we're going to take all the keywords that we want to target, that we want to bid more for, and we add those as negative keywords on our high priority campaign. What that causes it to happen is when somebody searches for men's Wilson tennis racket, for example, if you've got Wilson as a negative keyword in your high priority campaign, that means that every query that includes Wilson 
is going to go into your medium priority campaign where you're going to bid more because now you know that the brand name is part of the search query. And uh, on all of these campaigns, you're going to have global negative, uh, you know, actual bad negative keywords that you're going to that you're going to block from all your campaigns. But that's kind of standard, you know, AdWords blocking and tackling. All of the, these campaigns are going to, going to run on a shared budget, so they have to be running on a shared budget. So if you're going to set this up yourself and you've got a high priority and a medium priority campaign, um, and you want to set it up this way, great. But um, you have to have them running on a shared budget, or you have to have the budget on your high priority campaign really, really high, which you probably don't want to do. Um, because if the high priority campaign runs out of budget, everything will automatically go to your medium priority campaign. And this is what we see happen all the time when we're looking at, at, at really high volume retail advertisers that their agencies have, have them set up with, with high priority and medium priority based on different kinds of products and stuff like that. And their high priority campaign runs out of budget. And then all, their medium priority campaigns just go nuts all the time. And because nobody's really watching I don't know why I'm doing math or anything like that. Things can can rapidly get out of control um, simply because search volume went up and the high priority campaign shut off. And so don't do it that way. Use the structure that, I, that I'm talking about here. And again, the, there's detailed training. I'm going to give you a link to the to the, the first the first video in that um, at the end here. But the net effect here of doing this is that the budget shifts to higher value search queries that have more intent and you get more ROI. The nice thing about this is the big brands are still just bidding on products, and so they're paying, <laughs> they're still paying for those those low intent, high volume queries, but they're not winning on the high intent queries that you're getting. So what you're doing is you're sucking all of the ROI out of the market. You're sucking the oxygen out of the room, and and you and you and you're leaving them suffering for air. So, and as an example here, right? If we were selling, um, you know, engraved personalized, um, you know, cufflinks. We'd have negative keywords for engraved and personalized in our high priority campaign so that our medium priority campaign only gets triggered when somebody searched for engraved cufflinks or personalized cufflinks. What's that going to do for our ROI? Well, it means that we're going to make more sales. We're going to have a better conversion rate. So our ROI is going to go up because the clicks aren't going to cost us anymore because nobody else is out there doing this yet. Still, after me talking about this for five years, it's rare to find anybody else in a market that we identify as actually doing this. And uh, by the way, there's room for eight uh competitors in a market to, to still do this and, and everybody we're doing so you've got lots of room to get in on this and 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 start to take over the high intent portion of your shopping ads in your market but this lets you take the high roi keywords bid on those almost exclusively get the good margins get the good profits and leave the junk for the big brands the big brands they have these programmatic bidding system it's all automated so if their roi goes down they just lower their bid so what you do here, you just lowered their ROI by taking the highest ROI keywords away from them. And what's that going to do? That's going to cause them to lower their bids. In fact, it's going to cause them to lower their bids enough over time, if you keep at this and scale it, <laughs> that you're softening them up to then go after their keywords that are high volume with your products that you know will work the best on those. And you'll learn that by running by running campaigns to that third level. So at level four, what we try and do is start to take as many of the listings on the in the shopping box as we can for the high volume queries. So electric razor for women, and this is really any query that includes electric razor and women, drugstore.com has two listings here. I could go and put three or four in here very easily with this strategy. And um, and the only question is whether I can I can I can make a profit on it. But right now drugstore.com is the only one that is actually deliberately and explicitly targeting this keyword. That's why they're getting two products in there. So there's room for anybody else who sells electric razors for women to go in and 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 grab a chunk of this shopping box and get uh, get the traffic for less than them uh, because of the way that they're bidding and the way that they're paying. So you can literally turn this thing into where it's just like search ads, but with products. But it's even better than that because you can go after very precise, exact query, like electric razor for women you know, um, waterproof that, that you can add as much <laughs> to that search query as you want to, to the point where it would be too low volume for you to go in and put in a search ad, but it's not too low volume for you to target by structuring your campaigns and using negative keywords. Now there are limits on the number of negative keyword lists that we can use. We can add up to 20. The, there's a limit like 10,000 keywords per negative keyword list. And that's really where the limiting factor comes in uh, for big brands and, and they can't do this with their with their larger catalog simply because they can't control all the keywords that they'd want to control. But for you, 
you can go hog wild with this. You can take any search query that's ever given you a conversion ever on AdWords, and you can make sure that you absolutely control which of your products show up and how high in that shopping box uh, on, on, on Google Shopping Ads. And by the way, everything that I just showed you works exactly the same way on Bing, and all you have to do to move your campaigns to Bing is just do an import um, and have, your, have the same product ID in your data feed that goes to Bing that, uh, in, uh, that you have in your data feed that goes to Google, which you've used the same tool to do that, and I don't know why you wouldn't, will be basically automatic. So the, the way that this works is, is we, we have the same high and medium priority structure, and then we have a low priority where we have added negative matches for the exact match keywords that we want to the high and medium campaigns to drive all those queries down to our low priority campaign, where then we can set up a single ad group with just the products that we want. So if you wanted to, you know, advertise on Wilson tennis rackets and you wanted to have one men's, one women's, one kids, and, and maybe two other top sellers, and you wanted to stick all five of those in the shopping box, you can do that. And you can control exactly what keywords there are. It, it literally, you have better keyword control on shopping campaigns where Google doesn't even let you do anything in the keywords tab than you have with search ads where you've got all kinds of different matching options and all that kind of stuff. It's just a matter of leveraging the way that the priority structure of campaigns works in Google. And by the way, this is a feature that Google intended to be used this way, even though almost no one does. So don't worry that Google's gonna change the rules on you here because the rules are the way that they want them to be. This works the way that they want it to and it almost works the way that it has to because of the way that they have to, um, they have to deal, deal with this, this stuff is, is, the, is the, the, the product catalogs change. And so they really can't have keyword bids with a product as an ad creative because they'd have too many busted landing pages to even keep up. So again, what all this means you can test with a very simple low bid, low budget strategy. When we go to this, this uh, level two here, this level two structure right here, you can test with that, with very low bids and just find out what works and then go ahead and roll into um, a, a, a structure where you, where you target the higher intent keywords and actually start to go after the market. Once you identify that winning mix of bids and keywords, you can scale it up quite a bit and you can increase your ROI and margins anytime you want to, right? So if, you know, if, if, if you're getting three times um, spend as, as sales and you want that to be five times, that's fine. You can simply stop bidding on products that aren't doing that well, or um, or reduce your bid on them at any rate, uh, so that you'll you know you can give up some sales to get more ROI, or you can sacrifice ROI to get more sales. You've got the ability to do both, um, and that's you know kind of an important you know thing to be able to have. You have some unexpected expenses you know that come in during the month, and you say, okay, I don't want to shut down my shopping campaigns, but there's literally one, one, it's basically like one knob that you can turn. It's just, it's just a, a countrywide bid adjustment that you can lower your bids across the board and that's going to increase your ROI. And so if you need to, you know, bump your ROI because you can't afford to buy as many customers this month because uh, whatever, you know, you just got a big Amazon bill, you forgot to pay for your S3 or your CloudFront or whatever, you know, whatever it, it, it might be. If you got an unexpected hit, um, this actually gives you some ability to control and, and you know, reduce sales but get, get, get more profits in. Uh, in the short term, and then go back to buying customers when you're ready to do that. So it, it gives you the ability to flex back and forth. So what do you need to do this? You need a Shopify store. That Shopify store is going to have to provide a data feed to Google Merchant Center because that Google Merchant Center account is going to be what actually connects up to AdWords. And, 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 um, and Google has a free app that you can use in Shopify. I'm sure many of you have installed it um, just because you saw it and didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but if you haven't, it's available. Um, if you're selling, if you've got a small catalog and you're not selling apparel um, or custom printed products, Google's app might actually do the job for you. We like using Data Feed Watch. Um, it doesn't, uh, it's not as free because you have to pay for it. Uh, but, uh, but even for the, for, the, for the custom product people that have you know, catalogs out of a half a million products, we, we still use Data Feed Watch, even though they, they charge a, a, a pretty good premium to, to to, you know, you might, they might be spending a few hundred dollars a month just to get a data feed out. But when your sales are high enough and you've got enough products to, to drive that many sales, um, data feed watch is much better. And you're going to need an AdWords account. Um, if you don't already have one, or, you know, if you haven't already, if you haven't got one that you haven't actually advertised this particular website on, you can go ahead and create a new AdWords account um, for, you know, whatever website you're doing this for and go, you know, you know, go, go check, check Google for, for Google AdWords coupons. Cause you can, you can come anywhere from 50 to $150 in credit, depending on what, what kind of offers they have out there. And by the way, a lot of agencies actually have um, Google credits. They can just give out like candy. Where's agency, they're a, 
uh, an AdWords partner, they, they, they probably have some free credits that they can, they can just give you. And other than that, all you need is a little bit. And so um, I'm going to stop down here and ask questions, you know, for First off, the training is free. Um, the training is called Core PPC. It goes through not just shopping ads, but search ads and everything else. And this link will take you to a video that explains to you how AdWords really works. Because very few people, even agencies, sadly, understand how the Google AdWords auction even works. And not understanding how that works uh, will prevent you from ever understanding what I just told you uh, to the fullest level possible. So if you just go to seobt.co, slash webby1 that's our, our our url shortener uh for our company so abtco slash webby1 um that'll take you to um a blog post or like the first video from that core pc training so you can that one make sure i'm not the really, and, and then and that training and it's free you'll get uh, an email back pretty quickly with login credentials for our portal and we've got um well the first uh about the first half of it is already posted in the portal and, and it's an ongoing training so uh, that you'll be joining. So, um, so there'll be more stuff over the next uh, seven or eight weeks. If you you through it and actually show you how to set this up with one so that you can do it with others. So if you're a consultant, you know, who's doing this for clients or, um, you know, if you just, I mean, you know, heck, you know, Bradley, if you want me to walk you through, I'd be happy to do it um, for you as well. Um, but um, you can uh, go to seobt.co slash webby2. That does cost money. Uh, but it doesn't cost very much, and uh, we do get a year of of of, uh, of support in our our PPC chat room on Slack. And if you want to have my team set it up, or if you're looking at, at you know finding somebody, that sounds great. But I just need to hire somebody to manage it. I'm happy to talk to you as long as you're on a Shopify store. You can just message me on Facebook. I'm Dan Thies. I'm easy to find. But if you go to m.me slash Dan Thies, that is the easiest way to find me. And that's T H I E S, by the way, for those who can't read or spell Danish names. So. Um, Bradley, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce back out of the presentation and get back on the on the on the camera here. I think I can figure out. Oh, how. Man. That was awesome. Whistle stop tour, guys. Um, a lot of stuff to take in, but luckily there's that free training there to kind of plug all the gaps because uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not complex as stuff. It's just you've got to know the tricks uh, and the kind of the methodology behind it. Uh, but you know, a lot of it's just point and click once you know what you're doing. So any questions, just, uh, hit us up in the chat box and, uh, Dan's going to hang around for a little while just to answer those. Um, we've got one coming already from Ron who's in, uh, Brisbane, I believe he's asking what's the minimum number of products that you have to have in your Shopify store for this to work. Have we lost Dan? Hey Brad, I'm turning I'm turning my camera off just because I, I was getting oh. couldn't couldn't hear you. So, <laughs> all right. So I'll repeat the question. Low bandwidth, right? Yeah, no worries. So Ron in Brisbane's asking, what what is the minimum number of products in the shop for this process to work? Well, you can do it with one. Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to be super high volume, right? But you can literally set this up and do it with one. And again, if you're doing it with a um, with it with you know a catalog of four or five products. This is something you want to just do yourself. Um, right. <laughs> you don't want to hire somebody to do it, but, uh, you know, obviously you, you want to have, you know, a bigger catalog and a, and a bigger business has got some sales. So, um, so yeah, the, the minimum really is, is one. List of those for the high priority campaign, put the, put the product in the medium priority campaign and you're done and, and you're running. Cool. That's good. Um, Harshal saying, uh, can we send the links? So I'll, set, I'll put that in an email, guys. So uh, you've got the links and um, we'll, we'll check their work as well. Because Tim's saying he's not having any luck with the links, but I'm not sure what's gone on there. But we'll, me and Dan will figure that out and I'll send out an email afterwards. So no worries there. Um, Christine is asking, uh, she's saying she's selling apparel uh, and she's not oh. getting any sales on Facebook. Would it be better for her on Google, do you think? Uh, Google shopping is a great way to sell uh, apparel. Um, and I mean, it, I'm not sure exactly what we're talking about. I mean, we're, you know, the custom, the, you know, the people doing the custom printed t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that, we just rock that stuff um, with, with shopping ads. Cause it's, it's super easy to set up and do for us. Um, the, 
if if you have a, a very very limited catalog, um, then um, then you know it, it's going to be um, you know more limited in terms of what 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 sales you can make. Um, and you do have some requirements for what what is in your data feed. So if, with apparel, if you have variants, so if you've got you know a shirt that comes in white and blue or whatever, you know, as an example, and, and you have your white and blue variants, you actually have to have a separate item in your feed for the white one and for the blue one. And so um, that's where we recommend using an app like Data Feed Watch because Google's uh, built-in shopping app doesn't doesn't do that job sufficiently. But you know, for Data Feed Watch, or, or you know, there are several others, we just, you know, we like to use Data Feed Watch because it, it gives us a lot more capabilities. But uh, you might need to use one of the third-party apps to do your feed um, if you've got variants that, you, that, that need to be managed. But yeah, it's absolutely um, one of the one of the easiest things to 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 set up and use this with. Makes sense. Cool. Um, Julian's saying the links are working fine for him, so that's good news. Um, one one question Some I kind people of do that seobt.com instead of .co because because okay. we have the worst shortener URL in in, in the world, but. <laughs> Um, one question I thought of as we were going through, just in case anyone's kind of new to search entirely, if they've just come in purely from the Facebook angle, which a lot of the Shopify guys have, because that's mm -hmm. the bulk of what's being taught out there. Um, can you just explain the concept of a long tail keyword? Because I know you gave an example, but just to sure. Leave. So, so I mean, uh, and it's actually, I think I've probably got a power log graph somewhere like handy here, but <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, yeah, probably right here. I mean, let me, but basically, the, there are you know, there's a very small percentage of the keywords are very high volume. So, and those tend to be the you know the two and three word search queries. Um, the the longer um, the what they call the long tail is, and actually, I mean, the the application of search is directly out of data that came from I think it was Alta Vista. If anybody remembers Alta Vista being a search engine, but uh, but that um, that there the the vast majority of searches are either you know one off or very infrequent, and so it's just because when people don't find what they want, they add more words to their query, right? So if you know if I search for tennis racket and it shows me a bunch of like rackets that I don't want, oh maybe I should search for I'm a man, I should search for a men's tennis racket. Okay, you know this Wilson, I like the way that looks. You know I'll search for Wilson tennis rackets. And, and as people add, add more words, there are going to be fewer occurrences of that search in any given month, right? Um, they're going to happen less often, but they have more intent. And so that when we say long tail, we just mean the, the, the search queries that don't get a lot of volume, but for our purposes are going to tend to also have higher intent. So they actually be the ones we'd like to, to be on. But with paid search, it's been a, years and years and years since we've been able to just target any keyword that we want to. If the search volume isn't high enough, Google won't let you bid on it simply because they don't have enough data to hold an auction for that keyword. And so it has to be uh, attacked with broad match or other things. But for our purposes with shopping and the keyword control we get here, there's really no such thing as low search volume in terms of being able to target it. There might be very, very low search volume, but we can still target it in spite of that, but you can't do a search ads. Cool. All right, Paul's asking, he's saying, great presentation, by the way, very insightful. Um, his question is, how do you decide to place keywords in the title versus the description of a product? Um, your title, your product name only gets to be so long. And so you really want to think of it as, as I want to tell people exactly what they're getting in that product name. Um, so if, you know, if it's, if it's a men's 45 foot sailboat hat with, <laughs> you know, purple wings, that's what I want the, what I want, want, want the name to be. Um, Keywords in the description, they should be there as well. But uh, but the 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 amount that shows, um, and I, I guess if I try and screen share again, maybe I can show you. Um, so men's, I'll just do a men's Wilson tennis racket because I think they sell tennis rackets, right? I don't know. Pretty sure they do. And so I can I can Google presented. Okay, no, thank you, Google. You didn't help me at all. Um, so sign out of Google. Okay. Sorry, I'm way too signed into Google right now. Okay, so let me get the screen share going on on this one, and I think I can show you uh, what the what this search result looks like. And of course, anybody's probably looking at it already. But okay, so we'll go to the entire screen, and and there. So we've got shop for Wil men, Wilson men's tennis rackets, right? 
Well, you've got Wilson, Wilson. yay, Wilson, good job, right? You've got Walmart, and you've got Midwest Tennis and Tennis Warehouse. Uh, screen share's not working just yet, Dan. Oh, okay. It's not. I apparently don't have the bandwidth or something. Come on, help me out here, guys. Allow. So there you go. I'm sharing my screen. Okay, yeah. there we go. So I, I, zo I zoomed in on in in this one, so you, so you can see it here. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 Wilson's going to pay whatever it costs to have their racket show up, right? Um, Walmart's going to pay whatever they're willing to pay. Um, but these two here, they're in here with high value products, right? So they don't have the cheapest one there, but I guarantee you these two here are making money <laughs> by doing that. Um, and so that, so that they're, you know, the, these two are, are likely here with keyword targeting, like I'm talking about in place and Wilson and Walmart can't because their, their catalogs are just too big. But, um, so what you see here though, right, is what, what, what do we get to Wilson pro staff RF 97, right? Wilson pro staff 97 S tennis. That's what shows up on the ad. And if it's not going to show up on the ad, it really doesn't matter um, whether it's in the title or not. But I'm going to show you an example of how that changes. So um, I'm going to do Wilson Pro Staff 97S, okay? Um, actually, no, I'm going to do... Four-inch grip. Let's see if Google is doing this right. Nope, they're still not. They're, so they're still truncating. So I've actually got one where they could show me. So having the keywords in in the, and this is something that actually worked better at Google a while ago. And so it may change again. But right now having the keywords uh, in there beyond what you need to explain to somebody uh, what they're getting, not necessary. And long and long titles will 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 get will get cut off anyway. Um, so um, I hope that even answered the question that we had though. Your setup service, Deborah's asking, do you do you uh, set up all the negative keywords and the target keywords as part of that? So, um, so we've we've basically we've got we've got two services that we're offering here. One is is a guided setup, and that's just me walking you through the setup. I'm not going to do the keyword lists for you. You're going to have to do those um, for the folks that we take on as clients. Um, we do all of that stuff as, as part of the setup, uh, but um, you know that that uh, that's a, a service that we first have to figure out if if we believe we can make it work, um, make it worth the money for you. Um, and so that's that's one where you just want to message me with the guided setup. We're not doing any of that that keyword research work for you on your market, um, but for the most part, that kind of it's a fairly simple process. You're going to take a spreadsheet of all your products and then. And then figure out from that from that list of, of, of product names what, what are the keywords that you want to target and start with that. Brad's asking, how soon should you expect conversions from PLAs before moving on to new products? So I'm guessing he's doing drop shipping and he's uh, like you know just testing different products on Facebook at the moment to see what what sticks. Okay, if you're if you're and I should have mentioned this earlier, if you're doing kind of the drop shipping model where stuff takes eight weeks to get there for China or whatever that you're like not even trying to right you're just trying to test products google will will kick you out with with those kind of terms if, if people are, are 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 not able to to you know go and and buy something and have it have it shipping um yeah. the next day you you, you don't want to play google shopping yet okay. uh, you've got to have you know either either products in inventory or drop shipping mm -hmm. with um you know, domestic partners and not and not you know only trying to do the alibaba or whatever it is right but yeah. Uh, so, you know, with, with that said, um, it's about the number of clicks, right? I mean, typically what we would do is, is load the whole catalog in and we're going to have a bid that that's, you know, based on the selling price of that product times, you know, whatever the margin is and whatever we think the conversion rate is going to be. And typically we'll start with 5% as an estimated conversion rate, because that's not a, an unrealistic expectation for somebody who searches for a product exactly, and then clicks to the product page with a buy button on it. Right. So it's not like you're sending them to your homepage and, and trying to get a 5% conversion right there on the product page. All they can do is hit add to cart or check out, right? Yeah. So um, so we expect a better conversion right there. So, um, you know, but 
you know, if you get one click to a product and it didn't convert, right? It's really about, you know, if you got a 5% conversion rate and, and you've got a hundred clicks and no conversions, then I'd give up. Um, that's almost, you know, that's about 80% confident actually, but, uh, but that's enough for, you know, for, you know, for normal yeah. people purposes to say, I'll, I'll move on to something else. Um, but it's really not about how long it's about, it's about how many clicks. Sure. And, so, and you're, you're probably going to be looking at, you know, your whole catalog in there and you're going to get, you know, hundred clicks and, and get you know three or four conversions. And you're going to look at the, the products that, uh, that didn't do very well. And there's actually stuff that you can do, um, to help you, um, kind of figure out if you're, if you're completely, you know, misfiring on a product. So you can actually import data from Google analytics into your AdWords. You can connect AdWords and analytics and you can put, um, on your AdWords reports, you can actually look at things like bounce rate, right? So if you get a hundred percent bounce rate, okay, you know what, maybe this is the wrong product for whatever it's showing up for. So I'll just, you know, disable the bid on that product, exclude that product from my, from my campaign for now and let the other products do well. So you can, you might find some, some, some things that are getting clicks that just, you know, the, the rest of the numbers, like there's one page, you know, the average number of pages per, per session is one. That means that, you know, if they didn't bounce, they just waited too long to close it before it counted as a bounce or you got a hundred percent bounce rate. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of that kind of data. And we talk about that stuff in, in, in the core PPC training, but, um, but for the most part, um, you know, we set these things up to run. We set them up with like a $10 a day budget, typically for new clients that we're working with, which is you know, far less than they're going to spending once we know we have our ROI, Right. But, um, but we'll set it up and run it at 10 or 15 bucks a day um, with, you know, like on you know on, on twenty dollar t-shirts we might be running thirty or forty cent bids or something like that on it just you know low bids and and just let it run and see what it does and then we start to pick apart the keywords and scale so um because if we if, if we can't make any money at, at that you know at that low bid if nothing happens there then it's probably not going to be um we're probably not going to get a ton of out of you know the cost of our time to be in there trying to scale that up and so we might even sometimes with new new, new possible clients we'll run a test campaign for them for nothing just to find out um, you know, how it's going to work, but, um, but it's, you know, it depends on, on what you sell, right? So higher ticket items, there might be things that, you know, we got a client that sells, um, you know, solid gold jewelry and stuff like that, where, you know, it's like thousand dollar, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollar, you know, products. Um, the, the, the amount of time it takes for somebody from the first visit to buy uh, on them from what we can see in, in Google analytics is about 10 days. All right, so I'm not going to run that campaign for 10 days and, and say, oh, gosh, I don't have any conversions. I quit. I'm going to run that for a month or two um, before I really have any idea of what the numbers look like, because it should be seeing that ROI number get better week after week after week as you know, people that clicked three weeks ago come in and, and finally convert. And it shows up in the numbers for today, even though they really you know, they really started three weeks ago. So long answer. And I hope that hope that answered the question or at least got you to believe the question was more complicated than than um, than just how long. Facebook, you're buying data initially just to see what works and what doesn't. Yeah, and you're uh, and you're doing that the same with uh, with uh, with uh, with 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 AdWords. You're buying data to extent, but uh, if you go straight to that second, you know, that second level so level structure, you're not going to be overpaying for data if you if you if you come in with bids that are conservative, um, and then you know you can improve your ROI and, and your volume from that pretty easily once you once you sure. on it. So uh, Ron, Ron had a question about say is it so is it not worth doing with drop shipping? Well, I, I'd say yeah, as long as you've got the margin there. Yeah, it depends on what you mean by drop yes, shipping. Drop shipping. Though, right? Right. So I mean, I, I got I, I got somebody I work with on and off who sells martial arts equipment, and everything they sell is drop shipped. But the order comes in, and most of the drop shippers are already shipping the order of that day. Um, you know, so if it's going out the same day or the next day, it, you know that's that kind of drop shipping isn't a problem, but uh, but if you got something that, I mean, you know, you'll run into problems with Facebook on this too, if it's, you know, um, you know, three weeks to mail from China, that's just that Google doesn't want to send you traffic. Google doesn't want you to participate in, in, in AdWords uh, with those kind of terms. Yeah. So um, it's, you know, um, they've, they've, you know, they used to let us get away with that kind of stuff, but, but yeah. So, you know, if, if, if that's the kind of drop shipping you're talking about, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be even trying to do this yet. Wait till you've got something where you can, you know, afford to actually have inventory and um, and that kind of stuff, or or at least you know domestic drop shippers. Yeah, well, a lot of these guys are just trying to figure out, you know, does this product even sell, right? 
you know, so they're testing it with, you know, but, you know, at some point you're not going to grow a business on three weeks to ship a product to somebody. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, if you're in it for the long term, you, if you find a winner, yeah, you might want, you could test your product initially and then get, get stock shipped over to a U.S. warehouse or just find a U.S. supplier because, you know, a lot of the time the products that you can buy on AliExpress, you can get for slightly more money from the U.S., but... Well, the thing it's is, once you know you can sell it, then you can, you know, get some shipped to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, if nothing else, right? Yeah, totally. Cool. So, uh, any other questions, guys? Because uh, you know, we've got Dan's Dan's undivided attention. Take take advantage of it. And so, Just there a was quick saying that, that she has has used Google Shopping for drop shipping yeah. from Ali, and I, I I have no doubt. Um, but when you have a problem. Mm -hmm. um that gets escalated to you not being able to advertise your website on adwords again that's when it'll suck yeah exactly i mean it won't suck that much because you just you know create a new account and get a different domain name or whatever but still yeah yeah it's not ideal <laughs> yeah. so you mentioned at the beginning of the call um you've been doing some stuff with facebook as well so we'll we'll set up another uh workshop for a few weeks time yeah and it's just, you know we, we've been doing this thing for for um well we used to hack ways to do this uh, before Facebook created the page post engagement custom audience, but we've been yeah. having some really good results with, um, oh, we got a client that sells uh, snowboards and it kind of like that, you know, that season is about mm. four months and we've got to like really hit. Um, mm. Yeah. So I'm showing people snowboard videos all summer to build up a page post engagement custom audience for us to target with the, with the selling ads absolutely rock it um and mm -hmm. continue to rock it even after we supposedly heard that you know like no nobody's ads are ever going to show in anybody's newsfeed again or whatever but <laughs> the thing is if you can build build it build an audience of people that have engaged with your stuff one you know, it's about high engagement right that's what yeah. they're this is really about if your ads get engagement you're okay and if you're mm -hmm. already running ads you know like snowboarding videos to snowboarding video fans duh um, yeah. then, 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 um, then you've already got high engagement and you're, and you're, if you're only advertising to an audience of people that have engaged with your page and shared your stuff and stuff like that, the, you, you, the numbers can actually get better, but you know, it's something that takes time to build up. Um, cause you can't just flip it, flip, flip on a page post engagement audience. You have to actually create one. So, um, but that's, that's one of the, one of the things we've been doing and, and it's, you know, for people that are trying to scale, you know, not for the people that are trying to get, get you know, just started, right. It's kind of, you know, right now invest in selling ads, right. Conversion, conversion optimized stuff, probably whatever. I'm not sure exactly what you're, what you're showing people to do. Cause I don't, I don't really run the bottom of funnel selling campaigns on Facebook myself. We got Michelle for sure. that and she's better at it than I am. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, that we've been doing. I know you've been testing some of it, but, um, but we've got, you know, a lot of results across a lot of, a lot of clients that, that tell me that, you know, this really is like a, a big opportunity for people that are running, you know, if, there, if you've got some, some Facebook ad spend going in the thousands, you know, per month, then you've probably got a good reason to think about siphoning some of that off into building audiences to improve the performance of the other campaigns. So yeah, makes there's total sense. That, totally made no sense to anybody but you and me but that's okay because they'll, they'll get the bigger explanation i guess in a few weeks awesome yeah so we'll get that set up and um brian's saying great information so he's new to google shopping and shopify i don't know what i do yeah don't, doesn't know what he doesn't know but he's eager to learn and he's um all right he's gonna we're gonna meet in vegas next week well that's cool brian looking forward to that um I've been, in, been invited to a private mastermind retreat for um, Shopify's next week in uh, Vegas. Cool. With, uh, some I really cool guys. So. Cool parties like that, but if you could put in a good word for me, <laughs> yeah, I just need my expenses okay. covered, and um, uh, you know, <laughs> you'll be there. The the usual, bar. like you know, like coupon for a free massage or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> best class ticket and all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of those deals where you have to pay a lot to get to go, but hey, yeah. You so, pay for the other people in the room, and it's worth it. That's all I have yeah, to say about absolutely. those. When I have done when I have done private masterminds, it's always been been worth doing, even though I probably had to dig deep to to get there. But. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So everyone's saying excellent presentation. Thanks very much. So that's all good. Thank well, there's no other questions, today. guys. We'll let Dan get back to his day, and uh, I'm going to go and make sure my kids are asleep because yeah, I'm going to go get a shower. <laughs> yeah. Just I will do before I go to Vegas, don't worry.
<laughs> all right guys thanks so much and um yeah we'll talk soon thanks dan